is an important issue to address or to, to kind of explore. What is the relevance? Of, for example, we, we belong to a particular tradition. We've been subscribing it for thousands of years. The world has moved on. Is there any relevance to what we are on about? Does it have any relevance in the world that we live in today, in modern times? So this is a very interesting thing to explore. I'm going to touch on it in a, uh, touch different dimensions to this particular subject. First of all, the world that we live in is not now, I mean, the mindset of most of the youngsters today, in fact, I would say 99% of youngsters today is science oriented or rationally oriented. They cannot accept anything that kind of flies in the face of common sense. No youngster in any part of the world, including India or out worldwide, will accept things which are not rational, which do not make sense, do not agree with their own common sense. They're the first thing now, even if it's written in the scriptures and their forefathers were believing in it, even they come from a very traditional family, or even if they come from a very kind of very cultish family, they will still have this thing all the time nagging them. Does it make sense? When you talk to people of other religion or no religion, what I'm presenting, does it make sense? Is it sensible? Is it rational? And of course, the biggest challenge comes from the best way we can explain the universe is not about God and you know religion, etc., but through the findings of science itself. Science has done a marvelous job of giving us a handle on reality. How do things operate? How do we control them? How do we harness the world around us? Science has given us such tremendous power. In fact, the greatest power is this thing, the media, social media. And this is a tremendous kind of, you know, kind of, you know, major development in modern times because now any idea you have, any potent idea you have can travel immediately worldwide, instantaneously with a click of one button, can go to a million people instantly. It, it has never been, this thing has never been visible in the history of humanity. So it's a very, very wonderful thing that comes out through science. So science, if you like, has stolen the hearts and the minds of most of the youngsters today. So the first challenge that we face, the world faces, is can you somehow reconcile religion with rationality or religion with the findings of science? If you are not able to reconcile this, then science wins, rationality wins, religion loses out big time. So this idea of trying to see if there's any link with science, as I said, is such a crucial feature in most religions struggle. Because suppose you are from the Abrahamic tradition, you go to this idea of a six day creation and other many you keep put on earth as a special, special you know, kind of feature. None of these agree with modern sciences. Evolutionary biology will kick these ideas out. So science itself has to be appeased to attract the modern or engage the modern youngsters today. And you cannot avoid it, guaranteed. So this is the first thing. Now, you see, fortunately, the tradition that we come from has a major contribution to make in this field because it agrees with the definition of the word science, making sense of the world we live around. That's the meaning of the word dharma, making sense of the world that we encounter. What are the rules that operate here? That's the definition of dharma. So we have no difficulty with relating to ideas. In fact, the word dharma has more in common with the word science than the word religion. Religion means realigning humanity with some super personality called God in the heaven. We don't have that. The word dharma is something different. So straightway, Hinduism has a major contribution to offer saying, look, we resonate with science. In fact, we agree with science. If science tells us something that doesn't agree with our religious idea, we'll, we'll flick out the religious ideas, saying they are not in agreement with science. We don't want to accept them. Reality, <coughs> we are that open to the challenges of science and we are prepared to play ball with science. So the first challenge we face, we have such positive things to contribute. Because the esoteric or the deeper vision of Hinduism sits very well with the findings of modern sciences. It doesn't kind of fly in the face of evolution, they agree with evolution. It doesn't talk about six day creation, it talks about the idea of spontaneous creation, where space, time, and causation unfold for creation to come into being. So, all these kind of features that we find in modern sciences, the deeper vision of Hinduism has no difficulty. In fact, it can contribute towards the progress of science. I'll just give you two examples. The Big Bang Theory doesn't tell you what caused the Big Bang to start, who pressed the, but the button. And Stephen Hawking says something very nice. He says, there's no blue touch paper that somebody, God has to light for the world to unfold. There's no need for God. So the question still arises, but what caused? What is the, kind of, how does it get started? And the answer comes from Hinduism, not from Stephen Hawking. It says, really speaking, space, time, and idea of possession begins after Big Bang only comes into play after Big Bang. So you can't say what caused the Big Bang because causation comes with the Big Bang. Just as when you say, what was there before Big Bang? You can't say there's anything before because there's no time. In the same way, there's no causation. So you can't say, what caused the Big Bang? This idea doesn't come from modern cosmology, it comes from us. See the power of us to take Hindus, to take science into the next stage. Same thing with quantum physics. Modern science is, every modern scientist, look, majority of scientists now, theoretical physicists agree. There was a meeting about 20 years back in Vienna. 
agree that we are not really understood quantum physics at all. We have no clue. How can something which is essentially metaphysical appear as physical? This is what it is. Something is metaphysical, means not physical, and yet it becomes physical. How, how do we explain this disjoint? And they have no clue about it, and it still remains a mystery after 100 years. We know the answer, which is called Maya. What is and what appears, there is a disjoint. That we've known it since thousands of years now. So this is why we have a major contribution towards the ideas of not only agreeing with science, but taking science to the next stage of development. We hold the key. Free e-learning course in Hinduism. To register, please visit www.hindu-academy.com. Talks on Hinduism. Sponsored by People Care. Encouraging caring for the elderly in their own homes. For more information, please visit peoplecare.com.